So, hello. Uh, about three years ago, I took delivery on a Model S, one of the first uh, production ones. And uh, the videos about it were fairly popular on YouTube, so I just uh, upgraded to a Model X, and I wanted to highlight some of the differences between the Model X and the Model S for those Model S owners who are thinking about upgrading or anybody who is thinking about purchasing a Model X. I found that um, online there was not a lot of good close-up footage about the exact differences. So let's take a look at the differences between the two cars. First of all, the key fob is very similar to the Model S key fob. Um, however, this one includes additional buttons on the sides that are used for opening and closing the gullwing doors and a double click will open them, a single click stops them, and then another double click will close them. Um, much like the Model S, the trunk is opened by a double click on the front and the trunk is opened by a double click on the back. Um, the, the trunk also uh, will close on its own. You still have to manually close the front. Storage in the front is about the same as the Model S, a little bit smaller storage in the trunk is different because of the extra row of seats. They've improved the way that the storage panel works so it stows itself now. And you could fit maybe eight or ten uh, grocery bags in here even with seating for six. But then if you want to fold down these back seats there's a small button right here on the edge of the seat. The first press compresses the headrest and another press unlocks the seat so that it can be folded down flat and you can fold down one or both of those. I ordered the six seat model rather than the seven seat model which makes it very easy to access the back row of seats because there's this nice gap in between the middle row of seats um, and that's what Elon Musk actually recommended as well. On these seats, there's a position control right here that allows you to move them forward. And notice when you move one forward, it also moves forward the associated seat in front of it so that you can access the rear row more easily. And you can control this from the front panel as well. It'll recognize if this seat is not in the back locked position and you can fix it from the control surface in the front. So, Similarly, to put the seat back up, we press the same button to unlock it, and now can tip it back up and manually raise the headrest back into that position. And these reset the same way with the opposite push of the button. The gullwing doors have sensors so that they won't collide with objects, and you can set them from the control panel to open only halfway if you want so the child could get in and out. But an adult can pretty much get in and just step right up here and, and get in without having to bend over, which is really nice. So that's pretty much the uh, exterior differences on the car. The uh, main interior difference in the front is that there's a console in this car, which does not exist in the Model S. And the console has two storage compartments in it. And I'll cover those in the next video when we get in the car and take a look at the control surfaces. The dash is essentially the same as in the Model S. They've moved the turn indicator a little bit in order to provide the autopilot control. That may be the same as in later Model S's, I don't know, but my Model S was early enough that it didn't have the sensors and camera needed for autopilot to work. But otherwise, the interior is quite similar. So in the next video, we'll step inside the car and just take a quick look at the differences in the control surfaces between the Model S and the Model X. See you there.